I'm Jordan Rayner, and this is the Word Before Work. Today we're reading from Daniel 2, verse 24. Here's what it says. Then Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to execute the wise men of Babylon, and said to him, Do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will interpret his dream for him. The context of today's verse, found in Daniel chapter 2, contains one of the most absurd accounts in all of scripture. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has had a series of troubling dreams. So he summoned the many, quote, magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, end quote, to make sense of his nightmares. But the king didn't just demand interpretation of his dreams. He demanded that his servants guess the content of those dreams as well. In Daniel 2.5, the king said, if you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your house is turned into piles of rubble. Obviously incredulous, the king's staff replies, King, there is no one on earth who could do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods. And they do not live among humans. See Daniel chapter 2 verses 10 through 11. King Nebuchadnezzar did not like that answer, to say the least. So, he orders the execution of all the wise men in Babylon, including Daniel and his friends. But instead of resigning himself to death, Scripture tells us that Daniel, quote, urged his friends to plead for mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. See Daniel chapter 2, verse 18. I want you to stop for a second and just appreciate how remarkable this story is. Even though the king's request was certifiably crazy and impossible for the other wise men of Babylon, Daniel had faith that the God of the Bible, that Yahweh, could do impossible work in and through Daniel and his friends. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. God revealed the content and the interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream to Daniel. That's when Daniel uttered today's verse, boldly claiming to have the answers that nobody else was able to produce for King Nebuchadnezzar. Centuries before the words were ever written, I think Daniel understood What Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 3-4. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, we have divine power to demolish strongholds. Daniel was working in the world, just like the other wise men of Babylon were. But Daniel worked distinctly. He wielded otherworldly weapons, in this case, intense prayer, and had faith that God could produce otherworldly results through his work. Believer, those same exact spiritual weapons are available to you and me today. We don't go to work with the same tool set as our non-Christian counterparts. We go to work with the creator God dwelling inside of us. We go to work with his, quote, incomparably great power, see Ephesians 1.19. We go to work with and for the one who, quote, is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, see Ephesians 3 verse 20. Are you working as if you believe that to be true today? May we all be like Daniel, those with faith that God is able to do through our work what others believe to be impossible. 
Today's devotional only scratches the surface of how God's word connects to our work. If you want to go deeper, sign up for my free 20-day devotional called The Word Before Work Foundations at twbwfoundations.com. These email devotionals are designed to help you gain a rich understanding of the biblical narrative of work, how exactly your work matters for eternity, and what those truths mean for how we ought to work today. You can sign up right now again for free at twbwfoundations.com.